So the basic steps for changing a number from its standard or decimal form into scientific notation are as follows. The first thing you want to do is move the decimal so there is only one digit to the left of it. And you can see this in the example I have at the top. So I have 183 million. I'm, the decimal of a whole number is always understood to be at the very end or the very right hand side. As a matter of fact, I can put a decimal in as many zeros after that if I, as I would like. So there's a decimal at the end of this number. I'm going to move this decimal until there's only one number to the left of it. So I'm going to move it until the, the number one is on the left of it because that will give me one number on the left or in front of the decimal. So once I've done that, I want to write down this number, 1.83 or 1 in 83 hundredths, times 10 to some exponent. Now we need to figure out what that exponent is. The way we know what the exponent is is by how many places we move the decimal. So again, I'm going to count and see how many places I moved that decimal. It started at the end of my number. I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. So I'm going to write 1.83 times 10 to the 8. And notice that we've dropped all extra zeros at the end of the number or for a decimal number at the beginning. So the whole point is to be able to write these great big numbers and these small numbers without all those zeros. So let's think about why this works. 1.83 times 10 to the 8th actually means 1.83 times 1 with 8 zeros after it. Now, when you multiply 1.83 times 100 million, you're going to end up moving the decimal in 1.83 those 8 places. So you end up moving that decimal 1, 2, and then 6 more places to move it a total of 8 places. So we get 1, 8, 3, and then 6 more places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that takes us back to the original number. So let's try a couple of examples. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that big numbers have positive exponents. That's because we're multiplying by a, a big number, right? So 1.83, we have to multiply that times a big number to get up to 183 million. So our exponent has to be a positive exponent to make the 10 to some power be a big number, a thousand, a million, a hundred, whatever. Little numbers, on the other hand, then what I mean by little numbers are numbers less than one, have negative exponents. And that's because we want to end up with a smaller number. So if I had multiplied 1.83 times, let's say, 10 to the negative third, that would mean that I move my zero, I move my decimal, I'm going to move my decimal back to the left. So I would move it three places back to the left. So 1.83 would become 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, become 0 0.00183. So I moved it back 1, 2, 3 places. And I picked that 3 for the exponent just randomly to make an easier number to work with than 10 to the negative 8th. So now let's do a couple of examples. So for 0 0.0021, I'm going to write that so that I have one number to the left of the decimal. So that means I'm going to move my decimal over until there's one digit to the left of it. So that becomes 2.1 times 10 to some power. So uh, the power is how many places I've moved my decimal. I moved it one, two, three places. And it's going to be a negative because 2.1 is actually bigger than 0 0.0021. So when we multiply by a power of 10, we want it to become smaller to get back to its original state. 3,405,000. I'm going to move the decimal here 
one, two, three, four, five, six places. So this becomes 3.405 times 10 to the positive 6 because we'd want to make 3.405 bigger by multiplying 10 to some power. So it needs to be a positive power. And we want one digit to the left of the decimal, so that's what determined where I would move my decimal to. And I moved it six places, so that's my exponent. So now let's move to the next page, and I would like you to try all of these problems, um, by, try looking at all of these problems and determining which ones are written in scientific notation. So take a minute to figure that out, just write yes or no. So you should have no for number one because there's two numbers to the left of our decimal. You should have no written for number two because technically there's two digits to the left of the decimal because 56 is the same as 56.0. The next one is a yes. We have one digit to the left of the decimal which is perfect. The next one then is going to be no. We don't have any digits to the left of the zero. Zero does not count as a digit. That's just a placeholder there. The next one is yes, because we have one digit to the left of the decimal. The next answer is no. We have two digits to the left of the decimal, so that doesn't work. And then the last problem is yes, we have one digit to the left of the decimal, so that does work. So now I'd like you to try the next three problems and pause the video and come back to it. You should have 4.13 times 10 to the negative fourth for the first one, 2.16 times 10 to the negative first for the second one, and 5.03 times 10 to the fourth for the third one. I'm going to complete two of these and then I want you to complete everything on this page and the next page. So I'm going to skip down to number two. So number two would be 4.678, I'm dropping the zeros at the end, times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's positive because I started with a big number. I'm going to skip down to number 4 now. Now 5 is the same thing as 5.0, so technically this is already written in scientific notation. So this is actually 5 times 10 to the 0 power because we know that anything to the 0 power is what? It's 1. So anytime you see a number already written in, in scientific notation, you're going to multiply it times 10 to the 0 power. Go ahead and complete 1 and 3 and then go down to the next page and complete all 4.